Hi, and welcome back to Scholastically Natalie. Um, sorry that this video is going to be late by the time you're watching it. I've been having a rough couple of weeks, guys. My motivation's been very low now that I've <laughs> just been really depressed. Um, and so I haven't been able to work up the energy to do much of anything. Um, luckily my mom was like, hey, we're going out of the house. And I was like, oh, okay. And now I have bought a basic UV resin casting kit to attempt. I tried making something tonight, and I'm feeling a bit refreshed. On the other hand, my room now stinks of resin, so I probably should do this outside or in a different room than the one I'm about to sleep in. My window's open, so if you hear anything from that, I'm sorry. Anyways, <laughs> today we're returning to something we haven't seen in a while. D&D. &D. Hi guys, um, I realize that we haven't talked about D&D for a while, I'm sorry. Um, and today we're going to talk about pantheons. Um, I'm not sure if this is something you're actually interested in or not. It's something that I find interesting. I would like to, like, get into, like, more in-depth discussions about gods and goddesses and, like, how much they should interact with your characters versus how much they shouldn't, um, because I've kind of seen the benefits of both. <laughs> so, welcome to another episode of DM Life. Also, if you enjoy talking about D&D, &D, books, writing, and occasionally streaming video games. Hi, that's my channel. Please subscribe. So I want to talk about pantheons in D&D because D&D does come with a pre-made pantheon, um, kind of like different gods and goddesses from various mythologies. I know that we've got the Greeks and the Romans and then some Egyptian gods in there, I think. <laughs> I've never played with uh, the regular pantheon, so I'm not actually that sure. However, you have to make your choice um, as a DM before you you know, start your campaign, or while you're still deciding about your campaign, do you want to use their pre-made pantheon, or would you like to come up with your own? Um, I've played only with people that have chosen to come up with their own, so I haven't even tried the pre-made pantheon. Um, I made my own, my two other friends that I've played with have made their own, so here we are. <laughs> um, so then my next question is, what type of pantheon are you going for? Like, what are your deities based off of? Um, I generally go, like, the Greek route, um, which I realize now is kind of a weakness. I could do other more interesting um, types of gods and goddesses. Uh, but I was a Rick Riordan obsessed youngster, so I went with the Greeks. Um, and I did try to change it up a bit, you know, but I still ended up having the same basic kind of structure that their pantheon did and like how their gods work. Um, for the other ones, I my one friend, she based her deities off of like Native American like spiritualism. So it was very interesting because her deities are animals and like they don't interact with the mortals much and like they're all just kind of like off doing their own little thing and it's it's very interesting. Um, and so my best bet is if you're looking for something that's not Greek, look into everybody else's kind of like pantheons or like spirituality and like how they work with their gods, how they believe in them because I have read some Native American origin stories from my degree and let me tell you, it's wild. <laughs> Um, it's so strange, like, not like a bad thing, but like, just from like, because most of us are idealized towards like, one main religion of our country most of the time, and like, the th a couple main religions, we don't really encounter Native American tales, and by the time we do, it's just, it's so foreign to how, um, like, our creation stories are told, that it's so fascinating, they're so cool to read, um, I definitely recommend trying it if you haven't. Um, and, you know, investigate other people's besides just the Native Americans, pantheons, and or just their singular god and like how you could incorporate that into your campaign because it's definitely interesting. So next, I want to say about pantheon inspiration. So think of your world's creation story and then think of the main religions because what are your players looking for from your pantheon or your gods? Like, how are they going to interact with them? Um, are your players, if your players are devoted, are they going to be devoted to the most popular god? Like, um, basically from my understanding and like how we've always kind of done it, there's generally like maybe one to four most popular gods and like maybe some gods have like some negative stigma and stuff and you have to decide oops, why they have that and how you incorporate that into your own campaign and how you have your players deal with it. It's something that's subtle, but it's really nice to see when you do it. So then we also have to think about your individual deities. Um, so like, what is their purpose? Why are they there? Why do they exist? 
um, like what parts of life are they guarding? Like what's their main ideal that they're following? <laughs> Why are they making the choices they're making? And then also, what are they going to do? Are they going to stay out? Are they going to help their players? Are they going to be causing mass chaos? Like what, what is happening? And then also, why are they important? Why are they gods? Why are they not gods? Why are they worshipped? Why aren't they worshipped? Um, and you want to kind of like look at that and see how all those different things intersect. And then lastly, how do they interact with or treat their followers? Um, I remember the first time I was playing and I played a cleric and my DM then was like, yeah, your god doesn't talk to anybody. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, it's very rare. Gods don't talk to people normally. So... By the time we got halfway across the country, and we were like level eights, I think, and my god talked to me, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like I freaked out at the table, it was so much fun. Um, and then I, of course, ran my campaign in the exact opposite, where my players ended up running into gods and goddesses who were pretending to be mortal. Um, and so all of it was very interesting, and like I found myself figuring out the snags, of having gods so readily available, and then also seeing the benefits of having them readily available or of not having them available at all. Um, so it was all very interesting. Um, and lastly, you do want to decide how they treat mortals. Um, one, how they treat their followers. Like, are their followers pawns? Are their followers actually important to them? Do they have lots of followers and therefore they don't care? Do they know all their followers by name? Like, that sort of thing. Um, and then also how they talk to them. Because if your god is kind of like condescending and like, mm, mortal, you kind of want to, you know, do that. But if your god's just kind of like, oh yeah, I like this human, you want, you want to have that as well. It's not something you want to miss out on. So this was more of just kind of like a, you know, how are you feeling about pantheons? How are you feeling about your gods and goddesses? And I'll give you kind of like my take on how I made my pantheon. Um sometime later. I hope this wasn't too disappointing of a video. Sorry if it's kind of short. Um, again, my inspo and just battery for anything has been so low this week. Um, so I apologize if you've missed me, which I doubt because I have 15 subs. <laughs> um, but hopefully my random D&D &D musings have been enough to entertain you for a short period of time. Um, thanks for listening. I will see you guys next Wednesday, and I will try to, hopefully by then, be a bit of a better human and a bit of a better mood. So, see you all later. Scholastically Natalie, out. <laughs>